Now today I want to share with you one of the processes that we do within our business, which is called our master deal review processes. This is the exact process that we are using right now to analyze deals. And I want to show you how it works and hopefully you can take inspiration from this, build your own one, and this is going to help you out. Here we are straight away into the master deal process. Now I'll have a quick skim down and talk you through, and then I'll go back through it in detail and talk you, give you an idea. Now the structure of this is laid out so that basically my team member is going to load this up and every time they go through a deal analysis, to purchase, it'll be a purchasing manager, they are literally gonna run through this step by step. This is the standard by which we operate and why we enforce this upon our team because we realize that there are little nuances, little bits within our business or products that if we don't get it right, it's gonna cost us big money. So getting these standards right means that we are gonna get a much higher success rate on the purchase or the products that we purchase. Again, these are very much like yes, no answers. We wanna make it quick and they have a lot of links whereby they go to explainers if we want to understand more. I will just add this right now is actually a version 47. If I zoom out slightly, you can see here version 47. You can see that there. So we've been refining this process a lot. Now, if you're looking to scale and you're thinking about hiring a virtual assistant, what can I recommend that's going to save you time? Getting our free job description and VA contract. This is something that we have used to hire over 750 virtual assistants for our clients. And right now you can get it for free by accessing it by looking in the link down in the description. It's just going to save you time and help you grow your business much, much quicker. So it's going to go back in. First question is basic checks, really simple things. You know, are they the same products? Can we sell them? FBA, obviously simple things. We just cover the basics. And again, if we start getting no's on these, we'll just skip, move to the next product. Now, the next one we're going to do is estimated sale price calculation. And we actually do what's known as like, we have a whole process around calculating the fair market buy box price. And I'll jump over to that now. This is like another process we have, which we link. Now it doesn't necessarily need to be within the main process, but it kind of gives you an idea. Whenever you look at the keeper charts, what we're trying to do is on the keeper chart, make sure to set the year graph or the entire graph. And we need to see now if I zoom out, there you go. We need to check the average price of the unit. And again, we're going to be looking at that product going towards what it's going to be over the next coming forward. Like we we're thinking about two weeks time. So do not consider the price spiked because our stock may take two weeks to arrive in Amazon. So you can see here, like we've drawn a little arrow to say this price is spiked. Do not consider that. We're thinking about the two weeks. We can also use Seller Amp as a guide with a 30, 90, and 180 day price just to help us out. Or we can even check extra pricing on the Keeper tab. So we're just showing there what we're looking at in regards to the price. And we're drawing that line to consider the average price over coming in two weeks time and then removing any extra bits, price spikes. Now that's gonna help us understand what price we're gonna use for our calculation. And then we're gonna do things such as calculating the min ROI and profit for that. That's gonna be key. And again, we have another document for that. Then we're gonna do what's known as our sales a month calculation. We're gonna collect two data points to this. Predominantly, this is probably gonna be either a reorder data point or seller amp. And then we'll use another data point to do the second confirmation and we'll average them out and try and make sure they're close together. Now, if you wanna know how to do sales a month, I'll drop a link up above. Then on top of that, we will also do, should we say, our red flag review. Now, the red flag review is about spotting those problems which are going to cause us problems that either we've seen that we know about, obviously like IP complaints, or it could be things such as the brand is on the listing or maybe there's just too much stock and like we've got one here where it says if the total FBA stock on the listing is greater than three months supply that's a red flag and if we see two or more red flags we won't buy the product now the reason why we look at these is because we've just seen through the patterns of the purchasing in our business that these things are things that are key indicators which show us this product might not work now of course there will be exceptions to these but the majority of the time we've seen these problems and this is going to be an issue we have our sourcing we have our supply suppliers links, we actually have a link, a list of suppliers, which we approve, and they are going to be our ones. And we even on that, we know if we are tagged as a reseller, we know if we can bulk purchase, we even put old coupon codes, that's so game changing for us and helping us out. Then also we have like popularity by shoes, multiple products, all that information. Then we have a process to go through for reorders, like that will show us exactly what we do and how we calculate the reorders amount. If it's a test purchase, we'll go through this process on how many to buy. And we'll use also our cashback links there. And we have certain, should we say, processes for actually how to calculate the numbers to buy depending on the, as you say, category, depending on the product and, and what we're doing. And we've basically just built that and we're refining it. Why? Because we're always looking at the test purchases, how well they're doing and if we should have gone deeper. If we should, let's update that process, come back and improve it. And we're constantly refining these products and these processes. Now, the final one which we're doing on top of before we actually make the purchase and the one thing I didn't let you know is that when we start this deal analysis process, what we are actually doing is we start 
start recording it. So for every single deal that my purchasers are reviewing, before they even start this process, they just start recording on Loom. And the reason why they do this is because what we want to do is we want to record a record of the analysis process as it happens for use later on. And there's a couple of reasons for this. Number one is the fact that we want to make sure that if the deal goes really well, we can go back and look at the data and to say, what did what did we see in the data at the time of purchase that we now know was a key indicator that we can come back and improve this process? Or if the deal goes really badly, for example, like we've noticed that three months worth of stock on the listing at purchase is a key indicator to show us that the price is probably going to crash on the buy box. So we learn from that by going back to the original deal analysis video and watching what we saw. The second part to this is really helpful. It creates accountability because my purchasers know that if they are just buying deals which maybe aren't as good, they're going to get caught out because their deal is going to crash. We're going to go back and we'll realize that they didn't actually analyze the standard we wanted. So the net result is that it creates accountability within our business naturally because I can go back and look. Now, the one thing we do always want to do is make sure when we're recording these videos is to ensure that we have collect a lot of information. And this is why right here, if you want to buy, record the Loom video and we add it to our USS sheet. So for every product we purchase, we save the video. And then what we're doing is we're just sharing the buy and sell price, how we calculated the fair market price, the two sales per month explained. We're going to show the total FBA stock on the listing. We're also going to show the keeper data because we realize that this data we want to record because if it goes wrong, that's just going to give us uh, another insight that we should, was there a metric on that that we should have looked at? So it can help change the game and improve the process. And then we have our test buys. So like if we're making to do a test purchase, how many are actually buying there? And then also like cashbacks and discount providers. And we have a certain way we look at them as well. But this whole process here, the one we're looking at is really built to help us document exactly what we're doing in the best practice ways. Number two is the fact that I can refine it. This is version 47. Number three, if I have a v, if I need to replace a, a purchaser, I know that they're going to get up to standard pretty quickly. And even when we get the deal analysis through the video, I now don't have to analyze the deal. I can just watch their video of the analysis and I can see how they're analyzing. So I can see it through their eyes, which is completely game changing in us all aligning towards the same deal analysis process, which is really helpful. And it's processes like these, which we can just start building out, refining, getting better, which is going to help us scale the business and become much, much better. If you're a six figure seller wanting to systematize and scale your business to seven figures and beyond, what can I recommend? Check out the Fast Track FBA Seller Academy. This is my high level mastermind where I share all the insights, actual tips and tricks, but not only that, the strategies, SOPs and the processes that I have used to build two seven figure Amazon businesses and I continue to learn from other Amazon sellers. Now, if you are interested in building a business with virtual assistants using leverage to scale and you want to know exactly the step by step playbook that we have used, the numbers, the targets, every single sheet that we use and all of the tracking that we do alongside this to get results, check out the Fast Track FBA Seller Academy. I'll drop a link down below. Check it out today. Now, the one thing which I will add just onto this process is the fact that not just having a process to do is really important, but also putting them into a time block. And I'll show you right now my purchasing assistant time block right here. You can see that my purchasing assistant has blocks of time to do things. And you can see when you click on any one of these deal analysis, it's going to have the links to those processes. So they know it's going to be purchasing good deals between these times. And they've got the master deal review. They've got the guidelines for ROIs and they've got the ROI table for the refunds. So we've got three processes there or guidelines that help us out in just getting better and better at our business. Because of this, we're going to get improved processes or improved results and our businesses are going to become more stable because we are just all operating on the same operating system the same way and it allows me to scale that business so much easier. But that's it. That's pretty much how we do our processes in the business. If you liked it, give me a big thumbs up and hey, hit the subscribe button down below. Myself, Thomas Parkinson and Fast Track FBA. Thank you very much.